141, the main attraction. So the chapter begins with Obito's Biju Dama, which was connected to um, whatever was left of Minato's destroyed arm. It was about to go off. Minato had no choice but to teleport himself away from everybody else, and we see Sasuke protecting himself and Naruto with his Susano. However, Toby Rama actually pops out of nowhere, out of nowhere using his Hiraishin. He takes the Biju Dama with him. Also, he pops right behind Obito, saying, I have a gift for you. They both disappear, and we see an explosion right off in the distance. That was awesome. Toby Rama was badass in this week's chapter, I'm not gonna lie, right there. So it turns out that Toby Rama, the one that took away the Biju Dama and Obito, was actually a clone. Apparently, the last time he made contact with Obito, he managed to, um, to attach a seal onto him, the, his own Hiraishin seal, which is completely different from Minato's. Naruto then says, Badass! You can copy my old man's technique! Not too shabby, old dude who looks like the second Hokage! Oh god. Okay, I'll admit that part was kind of funny, but Naruto. Really? First of all, he is the second Hokage. Which means, since he knows the Hiraishin, obviously it was Minato who copied it from Tobirama. Ugh. And second of all, old dude? Really? He could be like in his 30s, 40s, I'm not really sure how old he was when he died, but I don't think he's old enough to deserve to be called old dude. And third of all, please Naruto, don't go back to the idiotic self you were back in, back in the pre-time skip. Meanwhile, we cut back to Madara and Hashirama. Yes, they are actually continuing with their fight, and we already see uh, Hashirama summoning his wood clone that had the Gonzo nose, and of course, Madara with his Susano. So that was going on while all that stuff with Obito was happening. Hashirama tells Madara to get out of the way, but Madara replies, Hey, I would if I could, but considering how things went, I don't have much options. So apparently, because of the th how things turned out, he has no other option but to fight against Hashirama. You know, he could have done that while he was holding up the barrier, instead of, you know, sitting around doing nothing. I'm just saying. But then again, I think he's just buying some time for his eventual trump card to be revealed. I just hope that Madara is actually going to has a backup plan if things turned out this way. I'm just hoping for that. Then we see a bunch of random fodder ninja actually witnessing uh, the battle between Hashirama and Madara. Uh, and they're like saying, Whoa, this fight's getting intense. It's a good thing we're not interfering at the moment. And then we get to see Shikamaru, who's uh, relaying a message within their minds, thanks to Eno. He says that regardless of our limitations, we can always be of some use. Our power might seem insignificant, but it just may prove to be useful in the grand scheme of things. Stay focused, never avert your eyes, because if an opening arises, even our insignificant power may be enough to determine the fate of this world. Which is why everyone must stay alert and ready to strike at the moment. I admit, that's a pretty good speech in Shikamaru's part, and... I hope something happens. I mean, don't let the useless fodder do anything. Just let the important minor characters do something. I mean, what the hell was the point of that chapter where we see all the rookies fighting all the bijou clones? I mean, I'm hoping some of the characters get to do something, at least the important minor characters that we like. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing them do more than fight a bunch of bijou clones. And speaking of Biju clones, I think all of them are defeated and now all they're doing is just waiting for an opportunity to strike. Now, um, we get to see Tamari and she said that Shikamaru would make an outstanding Hokage. Well, considering how many people keep saying that they should become Hokage, Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, Kiba... Yeah, I think Shikamaru would be a better choice. I mean... For a person to be Okage, not only do you have to be strong, but you have to have the brains, the smarts, to lead your village. Honestly, out of all the candidates, and when I mean candidates, I mean the people who claim they want to be Okage, I think Shikamaru would be the better choice. He does have the smarts, and granted, he's not like as strong as Naruto and Sasuke, but he's, he has his, like, his own power as well, which is good enough, and he is really smart, so yeah, I nominate Shikamaru for Okage. I mean, Naruto is strong, but I don't think he has the brains to become Okage. 
Sasuke, I think he does have both, but considering how he's acting at the moment, it's still a bit of a mystery, and I highly doubt he'll ever become Hokage. No way in hell. Sakura... No. Kiba... Definitely no. Oh, also, a moment between Shikamaru and Tamari. And yes, I like Shikamaru and Tamari together. So Obito, of course, is okay because, you know, he used his like, own special chakra of his to encase himself with a, in a giant sphere to protect himself. So then Minato plans to create an opening with his Ras Rasen Sen- Oh god, I hate saying this name! Rasen Senko Chorin Puko Sanshiki. The spiral flash ring dance howl technique. Oh my god, this is the third time that technique was mentioned and not once have we ever seen it. Seriously, what is this technique? Is this supposed to be awesome if it's named it that long? And speaking of naming long things, Tobirama said that if this was any other situation, he would laugh at that name. But this is no time to be laughing. So instead of Minato and Tobirama actually going in first, it turns out it was Naruto and Sasuke first. Now, Sasuke uses his manga kill Sharingan to summon Amaterasu, but it was blocked by Obito creating this flat shield of chakra thing. Yeah, it's strong enough to actually block the black eternal flames that are hotter than the sun. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Tobirama and Hashirama exchanged each other's um, Hiraishin seals. They say they plan to use a technique called the Instantaneous Swapping Flying Thunder God Technique. And then we see Naruto and Sasuke teaming up, and I'll admit, as much as I don't like Sasuke, I do like the fact that he's teaming up with Naruto against Obito. And I did like their new collaboration technique. Anyway, that collabor the collaboration technique consisted of Naruto's Futon Rasen Shuriken and Sasuke's Enton Kagetsuchi. They create a Rasen Shuriken made out of the Kagetsuchi. Tobi Rama then teleports right behind Obito again for the second time, and then all of a sudden Minato just teleports right in front of Naruto and Sasuke's attack. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I actually thought for a minute there Minato was going to protect Obito, which I would call bullshit. Even Obito doesn't get what's going on. He's like, what? At that very moment, that slight moment when Minato was about to get hit by Naruto and Sasuke's collaboration technique, he instantly thought that you guys are the main attraction. So that means that they're doing this so that Naruto and Sasuke will be the ones to finish off Obito. And because of that distraction of what was going on with Minato, it was actually enough to distract Obito. And this was actually, I thought was pretty awesome on behalf of the Kages. Well, the Hokages. They used the instantaneous swapping flying thunder god technique, which is called the Hiraishin Goshun Maoshi no Jutsu, where, where Obito and Minato switch places so that Obito would be the one that gets hit by Naruto and Sasuke's collaboration technique, which, again, pretty awesome. And then we get like a moment where Minato was about to name the new technique. I mean, he was like, I call it the Scorch Style Swirling Gate of Light and Black Arrow. Wait, that's, that's pretty long. Ah, fuck it, just do it already! <laughs> by the way, if you wanted like the, the Japanese translation of that, it's the Shakuton Korean Shipu Shikoku no Ya Zero Shiki. Actually, you know, come to think of it, it's not really much of an arrow. It's just a, you know, just call it the, and the, the Scorch style Rasen Shuriken. Or Inferno style, or just call it the Scorch style Inferno Rasen Shuriken. Um, the Shakuton Kagutsuchi, Ras, Kagutsuchi Rasen Shuriken. Why don't you call it that? Naruto and Sasuke's attack hits Obito, and Obito seems like he's pissed off at it. And then we see the Amaterasu flames engulfing Obito. Then we see Sakura, and she asks Hinata what the hell happened to uh, Naruto and Sasuke. And she tells them that they're both smiling, where we see a panel of Naruto and Sasuke smiling. You know, it's actually nice seeing Sasuke smiling for once that's not evil. But, hey, I'm just saying. That is where the chapter ends. So that is Naruto chapter 641. What did I think? I thought this was a really good chapter. Way better than last week's, at least. I like the fact that we get to see Naruto and Sasuke working together again, like old times. And then their new technique was actually pretty cool. Combination of the Rasen Shuriken and the Kagatsuchi creating a a Rasen Shuriken covered with Amaterasu flames. That was pretty awesome. Minato and Tobirama were badass in this chapter as well. Seeing their t seeing them working together, <laughs> I thought it was pretty good strategy right there. Confusing Obito with the distraction of the fact that Minato was about to get hit by the attack only to switch places and he managed to get hit. Now, this doesn't really mean that Obito is 
done for. No, considering he's the Jinjiro Kid of the Jubi, he's obviously gonna come out of this unscathed. Well, actually, maybe he will be burned a little bit since this is Amaterasu and he is hit by that, but knowing Obito, he'll find a way to get out of this attack and probably come up with a counterattack of his own. I'm actually caring more about the Obito fight than I am with Hashirama and Madara. Don't get me wrong, Hashirama and Madara it seems like a really cool fight, but Madara had plenty of opportunities to attack him, but he never did it once, ever. And now he decides to attack because he doesn't have much of a choice before he unleashes a trump card, I'm assuming. Now, as I said before, um, with Shikamaru, his speech, I really did like it, and I actually hope that he is right that some of the minor characters will finally get a chance to participate in this fight. I mean, what the hell was the point of showing the Rookie Nine, the rest of the Rookie Nine, um, fighting against the Bijou clones? I mean, what's the, what's the point of that? I mean, we haven't even seen Lee or Ten Ten fight at the moment. And as I said before, Shikamaru for Hokage, because I think Shikamaru will make a great Hokage, probably better than Naruto and Sasuke in terms of his smarts and his skills. Now, yeah, don't get me wrong, Naruto and Sasuke are strong, but Naruto lacks the smarts to become Okage. That is something that he still lacks and he still needs to work on. So overall, I thought this was a great action-packed chapter. Not only did we get to see some cool new ninjutsu, but we also see some strategy going on. Also, Tobirama and Minato were badass in this chapter. Well, actually, mostly Tobirama in this week's chapter. I thought they were pretty badass, but Minato was badass in this chapter, too. Naruto and Sasuke teaming up again was a great sense of nostalgia, and honestly, as much as I don't like Sasuke, I did like the fact that he's teaming up with Naruto against Obito. What is Obito going to do next? Not sure. We'll just have to wait and see in next week's chapter. So that is Naruto chapter 641. Tell me guys, what did you think about this chapter? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, Google Plus and Facebook links in the description down below. Check those out. And if you like the video, like it and subscribe for more videos. So yeah, that is Naruto Chapter 641. I'm Lunar Spiral 27, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.